Welcome back to the Wizard Shop. Today we're going to stress two things in this video. What kind of car you should buy if you don't want no shenanigans or no BS. And number two, how an oil change can quickly go out of hand if you're not financially prepared. Let's get started. So this is a 2008 Lexus GX470 and it's here for a routine oil change. And that $100 something quick little oil change, supposed to be in and out today, turned into over $1,200, just like that. We're gonna show you guys what we found when we do the inspection, look underneath, but I've been through this scenario a lot with people where it really turns their world upside down. Let's go ahead and take a look at this car. I really like the Lexuses. This one's no exception. It's very nice. So there is some little bit of haze on the headlights. That might be something we could look into, see if they want to do a restoration on it, that they're not cracked or beat up or anything. It's your typical early 2000s, mid 2000s Lexus. No, it's not a Porsche Cayenne or something high end, but it is very nice. It's a very nice ride. It rides very smooth and very soft. It's a gold in color and it has 17 inch wheels. It's kind of a gunmetal. What would you call that, Mrs. Wizard? That's slate. Slate? Ah. Okay. All the tires look good. I don't see any dents down this end. Now, a lot of you say, why do you, why do you always just walk around and look at the car? This is the same thing I do on every customer's car. It's not only to let them know if there's any damage, it's also for protection for the shop. Because you never know, there could be dents and dings that they got when they went shopping at the local store they're not even aware of. And the next time they get out of their car, they see the ding and they think, Omega Auto Clinic did that. No, we didn't. So, if there's any dents or dings, we like to let the customer know, say, hey, we found this. You can take care of it at a body shop or whatnot. It's a peace of mind for, for the shop and for the customer. So, let's continue on looking around. Tail lights are good, they're not cracked. Everything looks good back here. And we go around to this side. I also don't see any dents or anything going on. No key scratches, no cracked glass, no broken running boards. Everything looks good on the roof, the roof. And all the cladding on many different makes and models you can have where this is metal and this is plastic the paint can start to fade at a different rate than that so that's something to keep an eye on to let a customer know say hey your cladding is starting to fade you might want to get that repainted before it gets too bad or get it solved at a body shop so but everything's looking good on this one the windshield's not cracked I don't really see any damage Mrs. Wizard no, that looks good. let's take a look under the hood Oh look, it's a big silver plastic piece. Underneath this plastic piece is a 4.7 liter Toyota V8. And it does have services that have to be done. It has a timing belt and water pump. Although it is a Toyota product, there are services that have to be done. You can see the timing belt was done here in 2015. At 98,000 miles, it still has quite a bit of life left in it before it's time for another timing belt. Let me move this plastic piece out of the way. You can see that it's really not too bad to get to the side of the engine. You can get to all the coils pretty easy. You can get to the serpentine belt pretty easy. Toyotas are not that hard to work on. They're really, really pretty nice to work on. You can look down through there and you can see all four of the other side of the coils that would be easy to get to. Not too big of a deal at all. So hey everybody, here we are at the interior and we've got the car in accessory mode so we can see a little bit of the dash here and it is at 151,000 miles. So this has got some good miles on it, but being that this is a Toyota product, being a Lexus, this is nothing. It can go so, so much more. It's in really good shape. Even though it's a 2008, look at that dash. Looking fabulous. No cracks, creases, nothing wrong up there. It does have some really nice wood accent pieces. One thing that's nice is the buttons here. Very simple, very easy to read. As we move down, we can see it is an automatic. And it does have, obviously it is four-wheel drive being that this is an SUV. So it does have the option to get into a high and a low four-wheel drive. 
It does have some creature comforts like some heated seats and it does have dual climate control. If we look, we can see a leather interior and there is leather on the doors and they, being leather, it takes a lot to hurt them. Got a nice armrest on both sides, the driver's and the passenger seat and the back seat is leather as well. Headliner is looking fabulous and we do have a sunroof as well. So not a very big review on this car because it is really pretty straightforward. It is very functional, very easy to use. I'm really wanting to see the underside of this thing. Let's see what the problem is. So before we get this thing in the air, we can talk about Toyota reliability. I get asked frequently, what kind of car should I buy? I'm looking, looking at a GMC Acadia. I'm looking at a Mazda CX-7. I'm looking at a Ford Explorer. And I say, no, 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 you need to get a Toyota or a Lexus. This customer, when I call them with the estimate, and we'll take a look at what's wrong here in a minute, but he had no trouble at all with what we found was wrong with his car. He has multiple Toyota vehicles. He has a Toyota truck. I think he has two or three Lexuses, I'm not sure, but they all get serviced here. They've all had transfer case, differentials, engine, coolant, brake fluid, everything, timing belts, water pumps. Everything's been done here. They're at their point in their life where they're retired. They have money set aside for retirement. And they want to enjoy life. They don't want to be dinking with the car and it's constantly broken in the shop, fixed. Broken in the shop, fixed. That's the life of a GMC Acadia. As I've mentioned before, many times people ask me and I recommend to get a Toyota or a Lexus product. And the next week or two after that, I see them drive up in a Chevy Traverse. It's like, what part of, what happened? I thought we agreed on a Toyota. You asked me what you should buy. I told you what you should buy. You totally blew it off. But I got a smoking deal on this Traverse. No, you didn't. Just wait till the transmission goes out, the 3.6 GM engine blows up, and all the dash electronics go haywire, and you'll be upside down on your note. The people that own these cars don't have time for that. They know that. That's why they have Lexuses and Toyotas. So they can drive where they need to go back and forth in comfort and style. They're a very good looking vehicle without so many of the headaches of things being broken all the time. These Toyota SUVs are great for those who are in the retirement age. They have ease of entry and exit. They're, they sit up a little higher. The four-wheel drive is kind of a no-fuss four-wheel drive. It works, it just always works. If it's a snowy day, you don't have to worry about turning the actuator and hearing a bunch of crunching noises and you're like, oh, what do I do now? I can't go anywhere or, it just works. It just always works. But not really necessarily good on gas, but it does have V8 towing power, V8 passing power, and they ride so nice. This one rides, I guess the old term, a Cadillac ride. This, this GX470 has that. It's very soft, very comfortable. So if you're in the market for a vehicle right now, an SUV, a car, a truck, and you don't want the headaches of all the other makes, especially most American makes and models, we can all agree with that, I think, that most of the American cars today are trash. They're made to last three to five years, and then they just go bonkers, and they bankrupt you. Fortunately, Toyota's not to that level yet. They still make good cars. You can rely on them, but they do cost more. And that's why they cost more. If you go shopping for a similar year, similar style, GMC Acadia, Mazda CX-7, versus a Toyota 4Runner, a Lexus GX470, you're going to see a market price difference. Probably 20 to 40% more for the Toyota or Lexus product but still go ahead and pay the premium because it's worth it. It's worth it. You can bank on 250 or 300,000 miles at least out of this vehicle without having to pull the engine out and go through the whole thing because the timing chains went bad and blew the motor. You will have had to do the timing belt two or three times, but that's a service item. It's expected to be done and it doesn't cost nine grand. It costs $1,200 or $1,500, and it's once every several years. So now we're going to go ahead and lift this thing up and pretend like we're doing an oil change, and then we're going to find out what drove the bill up so high so fast. Let's take a look. OK, 
Okay, so we'll go ahead and check the condenser and the radiator. Everything looks good there. No leaks, no drips. This shield, although it's blocking a lot, it's also dry. That's a good sign. And we'll go ahead and take a look at our brakes. And they look good. Nothing loose. But there is a complaint here that the rotors are warped. They're pretty bad when you hit the brakes. It shakes pretty bad. And the pads have like maybe 30% remaining. We're not going to put 30% remaining pads back on. We're going to go ahead and do a full brake job in the front. And really, it's just a couple hundred bucks. We got the rotors, the pads, the labor, and everything involved. So that's really, that didn't drive it up so fast. But our $100 oil change has just turned into $300 oil change. And we're not done yet. As we look right here, we see that that boot is torn and there's water in there. Rainwater or whatever. That's why it's gray. The green, greenish color grease has turned gray. It's gotten water in there, which means the joint is probably compromised. We're not just going to throw a boot on it and cross our fingers and hope that it lasts. We're going to replace the entire assembly. You can see that the oil was recently changed because it's a little damp around there. It's not leaking. It's just that the oil, when it was drained, is that way. We greased all the zerks and everything. Everything looks good. And we move over to this side. Same situation with the brakes. We're going to be doing the brakes on this side like I mentioned, but look here. Same thing all over again. Water inside the joint, the boot's torn, and it's just slinging it everywhere. So we were just supposed to do an oil change. 100 bucks, 150 bucks. This person likes to use Mobile One Synthetic, only synthetic. And it quickly has gotten way high. So to remove both of these shafts is four hours of labor. It also, we have to include the price of the shafts themselves. And we got the brake job, and, the, and it just adds up really, really fast. So let's go ahead and finish our inspection. And then we'll talk a little bit more about it. Transmission is nice and dry. Everything looks good there. Transfer case is nice and dry. I know we've been servicing these. They have fresh fluid in them. They're good to go. You can see that the grease zerks were greased. Here we have a drive shaft that's not wobbly or messed up or anything. The, the joints are in good shape because we've been, we've been greasing them. Differential is nice and dry. Our air suspension is nice and tight. No blown out airbags. The brakes back here are still pretty thick, and they're not warped back here really so bad, so the, the rear brakes we're going to leave alone for now. Nothing loose there. This airbag's good. Nothing loose there. Brakes are good. And here's one thing that gets skipped a lot in inspections. The spare tire. Does it at least have air in it? Is it at least usable? Yeah, it's very, very taut with air, so it's totally usable as a spare tire. There's been many times where we've done inspections and the customers had to use their spare tire, and they're so thankful that it actually has air in it. Can you imagine if it was flat, and you're like, I thought I just had this check that's supposed to check everything over. That gets missed a lot, is the spare tire. Exhaust looks in good shape. It's not rusting out. That's something to look at when you get age on a vehicle is make sure the exhaust is not rusting out. And tow hitch looks good. Trailer receptacle looks good. Tires look good. I think they're fairly new. So we'll go ahead and lower it down on the ground. So if you're in, like I said, if you're in the market for a vehicle, and you don't have time to mess with breakdowns all the time, get a Toyota or a Lexus. Maybe it doesn't match your styling exactly, but really it's the car for you if you don't have time for constant headaches with your car. If you want to experiment or try with other brands, you're welcome to, but I've already seen this scenario over and over again. These are the cars to have, the vehicles. We presented the price to the customer on this one, and 
He's one of, one of our better customers, actually probably one of my, my favorite customers. And his response was when I told him $1,000, $1,200 to do all this work, he says, what are we talking about, wizard? Just do it. Get it done. And I love that because it allows us to send the car out the door. I know and the customer knows it was done right. We don't have to try, well, can you cut the cost or can you do this or... Make sure when you bring your car in for an oil change and an inspection, they might actually find things wrong with your car. Also, be very careful some of the quick lube places. They're going to find things wrong that aren't wrong. You might want to call a few friends and who are mechanically inclined, say, hey, they're saying this is wrong. What do you think? Or maybe uh, do some research on Google. Ask the mechanic to take pictures and send them to you so you can verify that that's exactly what they're talking about. Is it really that bad as they say it is? But as long as the mechanic's being honest with you, you need to be prepared that your $100, $200 oil change could quickly turn into $1,000, 2000 3000 I've had this call many times with customers and I tell them, hey, you know, you want us to inspect your car. We found this and this wrong. And they get upset. They're like, I don't have that right now. It's like, well, I'm sorry. You asked us to check the car over. So the, the repairs get put off, and then they get forgotten, and then it gets worse and worse. And then now when the car finally does come back to the shop, it's double what the estimate was because they've driven it so long that way, it's gotten worse and damaged even more parts. If this customer were to let the CV shafts go and just say forget about it, eventually they could grenade, they could come apart. That or the steering, when they go to steer, it would get really hard to steer and start making all kind of horrible, horrible noises. I have actually seen a CV shaft on a car that came apart and the shaft was just wailing around and knocking things and it messed up the strut, ABS wiring, all kinds of things were damaged because I didn't have the money at the time. You definitely don't now. So I just want to give you guys a caution. Keep it in mind, next time you take your vehicle in for an oil change, there might be a little bit more than that. So if you're curious what kind of tools we use to work on these really fine Lexus automobiles, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because we are really close to a video on this. I'm getting to the point where I may actually be able to start the engine. So You're going to start my car? Yes. He said it guys. He said it's my car. Well, my car. No, it's mine. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going to be the one driving it. No, no. It'll be mine. Okay. Hit the subscribe button, guys. Thanks for watching.